Thank you for joining us on a special edition of Live Lunch Break. My name is Rick Coster, and we are, as always, standing inside the holy confines of the Telegraph Record Store in New London, Connecticut. This is really cool because today we have someone from my neck of the woods. That would be Texas. It's a large state. You cannot drive across it in four hours like you can New England. <laughs> This is Eric Sandin over here and Joe Reyes. Hello. And oh, we're so glad that you guys are here. This is Demitas from San Antonio. Mm -hmm. It's about five hours down the road from where I am in Dallas. But um, So you guys are sort of on a whirlwind uh, promotional thing for a new album out called Blue Medicine. Absolutely, yeah. And uh, it's a really good record, so congratulations on that. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. And yeah. what's sort of neat uh, about it is that the record is taping, taking off and all those critical area vibes like you guys were really hyped for the south by southwest uh festival it was takes place in every year in march in austin a lot of people were, were talking about you guys and that's then great. npr yeah jumped on the bandwagon that as well excellent. so that's good so you noticing this yes um it's been great and and we've been getting positive reviews i didn't know how it was going to go because the record to me felt um risky in a couple of ways aesthetically and lyrically and, and for us it's a very soft record and uh, i i thought you know people are either going to hate it or, or like it but we decided we were getting pushed from some friends who are musicians uh that said you know this is i, I think my friend john used the words emotionally devastating put it out so um, <laughs> you know that, that's what uh, well i, I think <laughs> I, I always saw songs as is this like sort of emotional delivery system like that's how it works like you you sort of, um, you know, combine all these feelings into this thing that it's it's better than than words by themselves or music by themselves. It's like this component that you put together. And so this record is absolutely, like, probably the most successful recording that we've done that does that, that it delivers this emotion with each song. So I'm very proud of that. You know? And if you're not familiar with uh, Demitas, they also have quite a reputation in a larger format in the group Buttercup, which is a really excellent San Antonio. Uh, you might not like my description, but I think it's a pop rock band. Sure. It is, absolutely. Yeah. And no, really, like really, all your projects, great melodies, great harmonies. Thank you. So if you're, uh, you know, a Finn Brothers sort of person absolutely. or Simon and Garfunkel, yeah. do you find it hard? You, you always hear about siblings, the DNA, that they can immediately just do that instinctively, sure. the close harmony. Emily Brothers. You have to, yeah, so is it hard? You have to teach each other you to know, sing I, like this. I think over the we years, we swapped. Mm -hmm. We did like a blood transfusion thing, so that we uh, <laughs> now are, uh, have shared DNA enough that um, <laughs> we can sing better. It's really after, worked. After traveling around a van for yeah a dozen years, mm -hmm. I want to say There's that we've swapped enough particles. Particles. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I wouldn't call that, them just particles. Yeah. Well, it'd be it would be nice uh, uh, because it's just, you know. It's but taped. you know, recently I think I think this is a couple of uh, close of our close fans in, in Texas have said that we've rounded a corner, this is the quote, um, singing, and that Joe and I have become one voice. And I think it's because I have acid reflux and I'm, <laughs> I'm kind of calming down <laughs> and not trying to sing so hard and then I match his soft voice. So I think yeah. it's like, it's really working wonders. Well, and also, you know, this, this project- the <laughs> I'm not kidding, actually. That's the, the recording is actually several years old, but but us performing as Demitas has only really begun since- like February, really. Yeah, right? in earnest, like this year. So, so it's been a, a year of kind of learning, you know, this repertoire of music and learning how to perform it. But each time we do it, it does feel good. And and we do sort of marvel at like like what's happening vocally. So it's a surprise to, to all of us, actually. <laughs> but but we, a pleasant now we better follow through after yeah. that. And well, it's it's about. going well. And I think yeah, anybody that, that's going to see this, or hopefully they'll go out and just and get the record uh, Blue Medicine, is going to they're going to dig it. And I think so. I hope it so. is your friend that said it was emotionally devastating, put it out, is, it, it does have that vibe to it, but it's it's beautiful. I mean, there's a... Uh, well, there's, I think there's some beauty to thank melancholy. You, Abso exactly. Absolutely. I think there's, as, absolutely, melancholy is kind of one of my favorite emotions. It's the one that combines like something sort of beautiful and sweet with, yeah, that, that's something that's sort of tinged with the darkness, but but um, but I always found that sort of compelling. So. Oh, the pretty. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty. Yeah. Um, in that context, uh, I'm not sure that the songs, these specific songs on, on Blue Medicine reflect this. Mm -hmm. And I think you probably wrote some more at the time. But both of you guys lost your fathers uh, during the whole process of, right. of this. Mm -hmm. I would, 
I would be probably a fool if I didn't think that that had a lot to do with maybe the, the mood of the record and the creativity. Absolutely. You know, I, the, when we were recording the record, my father was ill with cancer, uh, with leukemia, and I was coming back and forth to Boston, actually to Stowe, so I was coming up into this neck of the woods, and uh, and when I would come back to San Antonio, so I, I was helping a lot with the, the chemotherapy and that stuff, helping my mother. Um, I'd come back into town and Joe and I would record these songs, and so I was coming up with songs, Joe was coming up with songs at the time. Buttercup was in chaos because of what was happening there. We were losing our drummer at this bad time. Um, and so uh, we, we did this recording very fast because I was in town for a short time, and it was a joy. I mean, like, it, I don't know, if you, I think you can hear it there, that we're having fun while we recorded right. it. And so it was an escape from, but it was, you know, it's tinged by all, all of what was happening. And Joe's dad um, was ill. And, yeah, he'd already and, been sort of diagnosed with, with Alzheimer's. So, so he wasn't in full care yet. But um, as we finished the recording, as we mastered it and got the artwork together, he was absolutely just in the last stages of that. So so the whole thing is, you know, a tribute to the to yeah. our dads and the feelings there. And the, the songs that were directly about it, I think, were too much. So we cut those off the record. Sure. Yeah, but we'll play one know. today. Oh, neat. We'll, we'll do yeah. one of those songs. Um, is it okay to say neat about something like yeah, that? Absolutely. No, yeah, absolutely. Right. No, no, no. You I mean, know. I, again, you know. <laughs> Fantastic. We miss yeah. them. We miss them because, you know, we love them. But uh, yeah. but they live on. And, and so, and yeah. you know, and each of them would want us to have, you know, good lives like like good fathers would. So, right. Yeah. So here we are and we travel around and we do this thing because we love it. But I think the, the impetus is there. Yeah. They just want, man. Just got to do what you love and, and do it the best you can, and that's that's what we do. So, mm -hmm. why don't you tell uh, everyone where we can buy merch, right? F keep up with you, that sort of thing. The easiest way um, to get it is through our website, through the Buttercup website, which is buttercult.com, C U L T, which is our fan base, <laughs> um, and uh, the cult of butter. <laughs> and and that, that that will be the cheapest. It describes way to my diet. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, good New England diet. <laughs> if you think I don't miss the Texas diet, y'all are crazy. Oh, yeah. the barbecue and, and the, the and yeah, the Mexican not much food, of that going the on up there. Yeah. 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 yeah, and I interrupted you. I'm sorry. No, I, I, I could talk about um, food, food all day. <laughs> yeah, but but buttercult.com is the place yeah. where you yeah. can like purchase the record immediately, and, and you can get it, you know, on iTunes and, and, CD Baby. and those places. Uh, um, it's at CD Baby. It's at iTunes. It's at Amazon. And Bedlam Records. Yeah. Um, dot org. Yeah, because yeah, there's a Bedlam Records. Yeah, we're on, that's we're not on it. Twitter. We're no, on that was hijacked by um, some Chinese diamond merchants. Oh yeah, really? that was yes, incredible. Yeah, our, website. our website was was overtaken. Really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, 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 the if you want to know about cutting diamonds, man, you can go visit the. Uh, you have to site. be able to read Chinese, but yeah, but it's yeah. pretty cool. There's some nice photos of diamonds. So. But, uh, <laughs> I don't know how that occurred. It was <laughs> they waited for the second. That's that. hilarious. Yeah, we, we forgot to renew our domain. So make sure you're looking at uh, dot org, dot and not org. dot com on the right. buttercup. Right. And by the way, speaking of merch, mm -hmm. and also of food. You guys don't know me, but everyone here knows that I'm an increasingly large man. They don't have any double extra large buttercup shirts on the merch site because uh, I looked. So yeah, there. no two X. Yeah. We're gonna get that. Yeah, we'll we, we that the demi now. toss. We we just went up to, to large on this one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, you guys are extra you guys large. Are trim and in good shape. You don't need. Uh, you don't care about the cult of Rick. <laughs> We're gonna we'll get we'll stretch that, a shirt though. for you. Yeah, we'll, we'll hand stretch it. Absolutely. You guys have, are very kind to be here today because you, you're doing three different these in three different states today. Yeah, and we're, so, we're moving around, but, uh, but it's it's our pleasure to be here. So this is Demitas from San Antonio, and we are glad they're here on live lunch break. Thanks. Unglued. 
Sometimes you just don't want to leave the house. Something you just feel in your bones, the ghost of mouth. It's making it hard for you to buy. It's not the first time that you lie. Sometimes you just don't want to leave. Something you just feel in your bones, the ghost of mouse. And it's making it hard for you to buy. It's not the first time that you lie. 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 It's not the first.
this is um, I'm throwing my arms around Paris, and it's a song by Morrissey. And uh, nice. <laughs> it's like you know, it's about unrequited love. I think no one does unrequited love better than Morrissey. <laughs> he can't even love himself. <laughs> It's fine. I mean, when I'm on stage and I've had a couple of drinks, I have Tourette's myself. I <laughs> can't control what I say. Yeah. And we've done a bunch of outdoor shows where they're free, you know, downtown kind of affairs. And we absolutely will get a few homeless people up with us. I mean, if they're, <laughs> if they're causing problems, like, hey, get behind the mic and let's see what happens. And then, yeah, it kind of quells it. We'll get her in here in a second. <laughs> oh, what else do you want to do? You want to do one more? Sure. Yeah, I'd love to do another one. <coughs> yeah, we could be here all day, but I mean, we know you guys, <laughs> you guys have to leave. Go, but yeah, but but we'll do a couple more. Um, what, do you want to do? Um, what felt really good last night? Uh, should probably do comfy coffee. Going Let's through. do it because we're pushing that. Yeah, for me at least. Yep. Promoters. Um, get a, my manager cap on here. We got okay. There's a fly <laughs> that was landing on my mic on that last one. That was cool. pretty special. Yeah. All right, so here's comfy coffee. Ready? Slot through as much as we could. I'd rather be dead than take another look. Two years spent in a duct tape lock, like drilling teeth with a nuclear sub. So he. Things were said and hugged 
words exchanged Like feeling pain in a driving rain The famous beat, a rhythmically set So here we lay in our comfy coffins, the hands at bay, our wheels so seldom strong. What manner of failure is this? Without true love, we just exist. Thanks so much for having us, guys. Appreciate it. Great. Awesome. Let's do, let's do one more. Let's do... Um, oh, okay. Just for us? Yeah, for fun. Okay. Would you guys like a, um, a song, or like a, a San Antonio song about San Antonio basketball or about San Antonio politics? Politics? Oh, okay. right. Easy peasy. Okay. <laughs> so this one's called Henry B. Gonzalez, <laughs> who is the uh, representative forever. And he punched out a guy in, when he was like 78, he punched out a guy for calling him a communist. He's very progressive. Um, I know, but, yeah, and, and the guy he punched out was like in his 50s. So. <laughs> Henry B. Um, love him. So this is kind of a ridiculous song, but we, San Antonio commissioned us to, to um, this opening of this plaza downtown, the reopening, and we, we wrote five songs, and this is one of them. So it's kind of ACDC, but... Okay. Love it. Ready? <laughs> I love it. All right, two, three, four. <laughs> got something even sweeter this tiny boy grew to take on bullies in Washington this tiny boy grew to be Henry B. Gonzalez Henry B. Gonzalez Henry B. Gonzalez Try to block a racist bill. He would desegregate. He was so sick of it. He had had his fill. For 22 hours, he read the San Antonio phone book. For 22 hours, he read the Bible.
So when did liberal become a bad word? When did liberal become a curse? On Henry B's tombstone, it says liberal, it says fighter, it says 